If you follow this channel, you know how passionate I am about knife throwing. In this video, I want to show you a technique that is easily becoming one of my favorites. There's a lot of reasons that people get into knife throwing. For some, it's just pure recreation. They want to get outside and have something to do. Others want to get into it uh, for competition. They want to start going to throws and going to competition. Those are all wonderful reasons. I personally got into knife throwing for the combative application. And combat knife throwing is a lot different. If you're going to get into knife throwing for combative reasons and you want to add that to your skill set, you want to learn to do things that are more instinctive and you want to get involved in throws that have the most power. One of the most powerful throws that I can think of, which we're not going to be talking about in this video, is a throw called military half spin. That is a very powerful way of throwing a knife. But what I'm going to be talking about in this video is a hammer grip no spin throw. Now, I know for some that's already going to sound kind of odd because most people will do no spin throwing placing their index finger on the back of the blade. But the kind of no spin throwing we're going to look at in this video has, in my opinion, a lot more power. So let's talk about the method of this throw. We don't have to talk so much about distance because it's not as governed by distance. It's not governed by distance much at all. Because if you're within a, a realistic combat throwing distance, the method's going to be pretty consistent regardless of where you're standing. Some will put their dominant foot in the back when they do this throw and some will rest on their dominant leg. As of late, I've been doing this particular throw with my dominant leg in the back. I'm going to kind of experiment both ways, but the way this knife is coming out of my hand when I'm doing this throw is I'm bringing it up and I am allowing my body, the torque of my body, to snap all at once as I'm letting the knife come out of my hand this way. Instead of, you know, doing it like this with my index, I've got the knife and hammer grip, I come back and I, I allow the torque from my body to push this knife forward as it's sliding out of my hand with a slight push. I have been able to produce a lot of power with this throw, very accurate, very consistent, very instinctive, and that's exactly what I want as a combat knife thrower. Now, something you should never do is pull this thing back and cock your arm like that. You're not going to do a no spin throw by slinging your arm. It's got to be all in one motion coming out that way. If you just sling your arm, it's just going to just over rotate. It's not going to do right. All right, I'm going to do some demonstrating here. Just watch the motion of my body. I'm probably going to put some of these shots in slow motion. I want you to see this from behind from about 10 feet away. Very powerful throw, powerful penetration there. I am gonna try this on my dominant leg to see how well I do. I gotta admit that felt pretty good. You know, one of the best knife throwers out there, Jason Johnson, pro knife thrower, he throws off his dominant leg. I used to do my rotational throwing with my dominant leg in the back, but when I started watching him doing rotational throwing with his dominant leg in the front, I switched and it, it really helped my rotational throws especially. I'm getting away from doing rotational throwing, but when I do, I'm most definitely dominant leg in the front. I do think that method works better, so thanks, Jason. Let's do the same throw again, but I'm gonna put it in slow-mo this time so you can see the form. That should give you a good picture of what it looks like to throw this particular throw on your dominant leg, man. No spin, blasting this blade just straight down the line. I was actually further out then than I was with a typical rotational throw, and that's completely instinctive, and I think it hits a lot harder. With this particular throw, I'm good with putting my dominant leg in the back or the front. I like both positions equally, and I like to be able to switch it up whenever I want to. Here's some additional footage on some of the throws like this I've done as of late. This is easily becoming one of my favorite throws. Between this and military half spin, they're probably my favorite. And you just got so much versatility as far as distance is concerned. I can even go further back with this throw. If you're wondering what I'm throwing, this is a Grandway fixed blade knife. This is a $13 budget blade, 440 steel. It throws well, it handles well. I have beat it to death 
and it's still trucking. Sometimes the best things in life is something you can get out and use and beat to death and have fun with. Being able to do hammer grip, no spin, is as basic and dependable as it gets. And thankfully, you don't have to just do this throw from up close. When I first got into knife throwing, I thought that this throw had to be done up close, but the more I thought about it and the more I worked on it, the more I realized you can keep going further and further back. And as I've demonstrated, you can hit this throw from some good distances. All it takes to become a knife thrower is to just want it. If you want it, you'll get out and work on it. And if you get out and work on it, you're going to get better. You're going to find out what knives work best for you, what throws work best for you. And just the cool thing about this is that you always grow. You're always growing as a knife thrower. Just when you think you've reached a plateau, you learn something else and boom, here comes another level. I say this as humbly as I can in all sincerity. I don't want to sound egotistical. I just want to be able to make this statement. And that is knife throwing is rewarding. If you get good at it, it does bring a certain level of respect. You can't let that go to your head. You got to stay humble. I've seen people get egotistical in this field and it's just terrible. People ostracize others when they get egotistical but there's a balance to everything and there is a, a great deal of respect that comes with learning this art and i want you to be able to follow my videos and learn this in a humble and friendly environment i appreciate you watching this video i'd love to hear from you if you're struggling with a certain technique if you have questions i try to respond to every comment that comes through uh, to my youtube channel i want to give that to my subscribers so let me know what you think let me know what you need and i look forward to answering take care